Today we'll be talking about conservation of momentum. We use the work energy theorem to derive conservation of energy. Now we'll do the same. Now we're going to use the impulse momentum theorem to derive the principle of conservation of linear momentum. First, we need to talk about the difference between what's called internal and external forces. Internal forces are forces that objects within a system exert on each other, while external forces are forces exerted by objects outside of the system. And we're going to consider two objects that collide in midair to be the system, M1 and M2. So here they are. They come together. They collide, they bounce off each other, and they keep on going. Okay. Let's apply the impulse momentum theorem to each of the objects. First, we'll look at object one. There's two forces acting on object one. There's a the weight of object one. This is an external force because it's caused by the Earth. And then we have an internal force, F, 1, 2. This is the force of object 2 acting on object 1. And this is an internal force because we're considering the system to be M1 and M2. So this is a force between the two objects. All right, now we'll do both objects and we come up with these two equations. So. Here's the external force acting on object 1, which would be the weight of object 1. Here's the internal force, the force of object 2 on 1. That causes the change in momentum of object 1. And looking at the same thing with object 2, here's the weight of object 2 caused by the Earth, interaction between the object and the Earth. And here's the object 2's interaction caused by number 1, or the force on 2 by 1. All right. So here are the two equations. So we're going to add them together. When we add them together, we get this. Took these two terms and these two terms, added them together, multiply them by time, and then took all this and added it to all this, and I got that. Take a moment to look at it. All right. Here it is again. So now what we'd like to do is rearrange the equation so the final momentums and the initial momentums are all together. So what I did is I got all the final momentums together. I took the final momentum here, this final momentum here, added them together, and I subtracted the initial momentums. Okay. And you should also notice that the force on 1 due to 2 has to be equal and opposite to the force on 2 due to 1. And the reason of that is Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So what does that leave us? Since F1 on 2, excuse me, F1, 2, which is the force on 1 due to 2, is equal to the negative of force 2 on 1, they can cancel out. And we're just left with this, which is the external two external forces added together times the time equals the change in momentum. Or in other words, the sum of all the external forces. We only considered uh, the weight in this case, but let's say we uh, included air friction as well. Add up all these external forces, times it by time, that would cause a change in momentum. All right, so here we go. If we assume the external forces are zero, okay, um, and we can, we can disregard friction. Um, we could disregard uh, weight a lot of times because that's acting vertical when the objects are moving horizontally. Um, we can obtain this equation that the final momentum has to equal the initial momentum. And this is what's actually called the, the principle of conservation of linear momentum. The total linear momentum of isolated system is constant or conserved. An isolated system is one for which the sum of the um, external forces acting on a system are zero. Okay. So let's uh, look at a conceptual idea 
And this is a little confusing, but I'll try to explain it to you. You have two um, billiard balls colliding. That is, it's on a friction-free surface. Um, is the total momentum of the two ball system the same before and after the collision? And answer the same question again for the um, only one ball in the system. Okay. All right. So the principle of conservation of linear momentum, the total linear momentum of an isolated system is constant or conserved. An isolated system is one for which the sum of the average external forces acting on the system is zero. So we know that. In the top picture, the net external force on the system is zero. Because here's what we have. We have the weight of abject one acting down, but the normal force is acting up. So these two cancel each other out, so they don't really interact, or they don't count, I guess. And the same thing is true with these guys. And they actually push on each other, but those are internal forces, so therefore they cancel each other out. But in the bottom picture, if you only considered one ball as a system, the vertical direction still cancels out, but now there is an, a force of this object two on one that doesn't cancel out. Um, so hopefully you can understand that idea that here the internal forces cancel each other out. If you only consider one ball, they don't cancel each other out. Okay. So let's try an example. Um, we're going to start with two ice skaters. They start from rest and push off each other um, on ice where friction is negligible. So that means there's no external force acting on it. Yes, there's weight acting down and normal force acting up, but as you can see from before, they would cancel each other out. So we can actually say the momentum before is equal to momentum after. And here's our two skaters. And let's actually give some um, numbers to this. You have a 54 kilogram woman and an 88 kilogram man, the woman moves away with a speed of 2.5, and we would like to know what the speed of the man is. So if she moves away with a speed of 2.5 to the right, then 2.5, excuse me, then the right must be positive. And he's gonna move in the, the negative direction. And notice, what is her speed to begin with? That's important. All right. The initial momentum of this uh, is zero since they started from rest. So we know that whatever momentum the man has has to equal whatever momentum the woman has. One's going to be in the positive direction, one's going to be in the negative direction. And then we can solve for our unknown term, which is the final velocity of the man. Put numbers in, and you can see that his speed comes out to be less, which you expect because he weigh, he has more mass, so he has more mass, his velocity is going to be less. Her mass is less, so her velocity is going to be more. Because those two terms multiplied together have to be equal to each other. The man's momentum is going to be negative, and the woman's momentum is going to be positive. All right, let's see if there's some um, basic ideas that we should understand when we do these type of problems. The first idea is to decide which objects are included in the system. In the previous question, we had the man and the woman. Relative to the system, identify which ones are internal and external forces. So um, in this case, the internal forces would be the man on the woman and the woman on the man. Verify that the system is isolated. In other words, no energy or forces are being added to, by external um, objects. Set the final momentum of the system equal to its initial momentum, and you would solve for any unknowns. And you gotta remember that momentum is a vector quantity, and you'll use this idea pretty much with all conservation momentum problems.